about geraniums today, and these are so beautiful right now, but they never mm. seem to last all summer, and you're gonna tell us how to make that happen. Well, you know, they are a cool season type of plant. They like cooler nights. Okay. Uh, not freezing cold, but cooler nights. So mm -hmm. what happens in our summertime, it's not just our days that are hot, it's our nights that are still extremely humid and right. hot. So dreams tend to burn out in time, and there's ways in which you can make them last all summer. Number one, even though they can go in full sun, in the heat of summertime, they like afternoon filtered light, not full hot sun. Okay. And so semi-shade means they're gonna last longer for you. All right. And number two, they like good drainage, and they also like to be kept moist. Okay. And not go through cycles where you keep forgetting to water, they keep stressing and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And most important is actually fertilizing them. Okay. So anything with a high phosphorus number, this is a phosphorus is the middle number. This one's 58, so it's very high. Okay. This is BR61, one of the highest you can get um, for phosphorus. So 58 and, is a high number. Yeah, and okay. I fertilize mine every two weeks. Okay. And I am telling you, my during the summertime, my geraniums are absolutely beautiful. You keep them indoors? No, I no, no, but here's the good thing about these. In the wintertime, of course, they're going to freeze with the first freeze, heavy freeze. Right. But they actually make wonderful house plants in a window. Okay. Yeah. So you have color all during the winter months mm. and it gives you the hope of, of spring. The color of these right here are so beautiful. Isn't that, this They're is so raspberry. Bright. Look at that. It has a white eye, so it, make, it punches it out a little yeah. bit. Um, my favorite yeah. happens to be orange, the mm -hmm. orange geranium, but I brought these baskets. Now, they're in hanging baskets, but they're designed to take the hangers off okay. and plant them. But these are mixed. So here's the I cool thing. Too. If your geraniums start to, and they will stress in the heat of summertime and bloom less, well, you have other plants mixed in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they're going strong and you're not going to notice that. So this is like this is called white diamond euphorbia. Looks like baby's breath. It does. Okay. Bacoba, which I love. Um, and this one over here is the Million Bells Petunia, and it has the silver plectranthus. And I am telling you, this plectranthus plant will take over in the summertime. If somebody said, uh, hey, Ashley, if I went to the doctor and said, you have plectranthus, I'd go, oh, no. <laughs> it sounds like a diagnosis. <laughs> it does, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, but no, it's a great oh, plant. Oh, my gosh, I didn't know I had it's, plectranthus. <laughs> it's a great, if, and if you notice, I didn't bring red. Red is the number one seller when it comes to geraniums because it's what most grandmothers did and that type oh, of thing. Yeah. So we're used to that. I like vibrant colors and I mix my colors. Mm -hmm. I do. I, I set these. I take off the hangers. And I set them in a, a clay pot and I'll mix the colors at my front door and they'll just grow beautiful so and bloom. Gorgeous. And your neighbors are going to be very envious oh. when they drive by. So you're saying this is really important. Is this like, do you mix that with your water yeah. when you're watering yeah. them? You know, there's like miracle Grow, which I also love. Yep. But BRC 61 is high in phosphorus and right. you know when you mix uh, like America Grill sometimes it suds up if you ever notice that in the can and mm -hmm. get your hand this does not sud up so I, I like it and I also brought insecticide this is triple action plus which is insecticide fungicide and miticide so this is one of the reasons why my plants don't thrive because I, <laughs> I just stick them there and like get a little water I know I need to do some extra but, but you just train yourself yeah. and all you do is throw it in a water can and I do two water cans at one time so you're not going back and forth mm -hmm. and you just do it and I'm telling you what when they start looking good, you're like, oh my God. These and look so do beautiful and healthy. Yeah. The, yeah. And this, the leaves on this one are so This really is like a waxy kind of foliage leaf yeah. on it. So there's all different varieties of geraniums out there There really for you. is. I, I don't think the camera probably does the color of these justice. Ben because, had a really good so shot there really a minute did. ago. And I was like, wow, that looks nice. They are so pretty and detailed. I love these. Yeah, and easy to grow. Yeah, well, easy to grow is important. We're creating magical mushrooms for our garden. And yeah. as you can see, he, he brought something these little guys right here and this is such a fun project it's fun for kids but mm -hmm. if you want to do a table arrangement for a party it's real easy to do and all you need is the first the wire lights right which are battery operated and then just a glue gun and maybe green sheet moss to hide the wire and that is it okay and you tell me you made these yeah these little mushrooms it's so easy glue yep. okay so what you're gonna do is you you put your batteries on you could hot glue this to the back if you you're gonna use a log this. yeah I glued it to the back but I made sure the door that slides open for the batteries <laughs> is on the outside. That's important. Okay, that's an, that's important. So we'll pretend we do that, but all you do is here we're just taking a log that you can get and you take your wire and you just start to bend it into like 
It's going to be the stem. Okay. And I try to put one of the lights near the top because the top part of the mushroom is also hot glue. We just had it and flattened it out. Right. So then you take that and you just bend it here. And if you want to hot glue it right there. Okay. I don't want to. You're well, making me nervous. I've been burnt many times. Oh my gosh. Is it right here? Yeah, right there. Okay. Is that okay. enough? That's enough. Oh my God. And we'll let that dry for just a little bit and it doesn't take long. And then you can bend it any way you want. And then if you want, start taking the hot glue gun and going up the stem. You're okay. gonna cover the whole entire stem. Are you ready? Y me? Yes. I'm nervous. You just, so just, I'm just covering the Just entire cover the stem? stem to create the, yeah. Oh You're my God. doing good. And if you burn me, you know, I, no. I'll try not to flinch. Is that good or do I need more? Oh, you need to make, cover the whole thing. Oh, you're, okay. Now, if you're really worried about burning yourself, then gloves are great for this. Right. Okay, yeah, I see how cool that, yeah, you're doing really good. And go all the way up to the top so we have a little base for our top of our mushroom. Why am I so shaky? Oh my gosh, see, look. Well, you're on I'm live TV. I'm not at a bad angle here, I think. Yeah. Okay, so, well, yeah. and then once that dries and you let it dry for a little bit, then you can do another one, another one, because mushrooms grow in clusters. And then all you have to do is on a plate, Go ahead and make the top of your mushroom. Okay. And we're How gonna, did you make it so perfectly round? Does it just kind of spread? It on spreads its own? out by itself. Okay. You let it cool, and then you just peel it off, and that's the top of it. So if you right. put some hot glue right here at the top, then I'll put this on top okay. of it. Now it takes a little bit for this to dry, so the key thing is don't rush it. Take your time. Is that good, or yeah. does it need to be a little more? Right on the top. There you go. Okay. Okay. So and then. That will dry on the top. So yeah, you're going to have yeah. to hold it there. You have to hold it for just a little bit. Um, but once you do that, then it becomes just like this. Right. The and they're still, and they're bendable. There. So you can bend these any way you want. Now you have the wire going up. So mm -hmm. I went ahead and took my green sheet moss and I hot glued that to make it look a little bit more natural. And then I added some other mushrooms and you can add bugs. You can do whatever you want to create a Real fun looking display. Bugs. That's right. And you can just do a small <laughs> little thing that can be by a kid's bedside mm -hmm. or something like that. Or if you have a terrarium, you know, and you have plants growing it, you can do these magical mushrooms like they're grown in the terrarium like as well. Yeah, just set it around um, outside, I guess, oh, as well. Front it's door? In. Yeah, that would Backyard be Backyard patio. Here's one thing I did. One time I did a house and we had the front pots mm -hmm. and we had some branches come out and then I hot glued those to the branches and it's just fun because you turn it on when you have a party. Right. And these last forever turned on and then it's just something different and that's the thing that people remember yeah. are the different things. It's fun, it's easy, great on a rainy day, great on a snowy day to create. That is so great. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been stuck indoors, it seems like, for quite a while. Now, with all of these other little mushrooms, the little ladybugs, I mean, those are things that you could pick up at your store. Yeah, we sell all these at Botanica Gardens and Plantopia. I'm all about bugs. I have every <laughs> type of metal bug and ant, and I show the ants before on TV, and people love they're them. They're fun. And That's they're fun great. to use inside, outside, on a wall, on a fence, mm -hmm. anything you want. It's up to you to decide how you want to use that it. That is so great. So, yeah, you have two stores. Botanica Gardens, and then you have Plantopia, North Little Rock. Mm -hmm. um, how do you come up with these ideas? You know, I would never think, wow, I can make mushrooms with glue. You're well, so creative. Well, usually it's a client has a party or something like that, and you're trying to think, what can I do differently? Right. And that's how most of the time it comes up. That is so fun. I love that. And see, now I, I'm the kind of person that I was over here and it didn't turn out the way I wanted. I'm, after, when we go to break, I'm like, okay, move. Well, see, I see, need to yeah, fix yeah, this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's coming together. No, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, starting yeah. to actually happen now. Yeah, I, once I have it, once to, it hardens, it's easy to move. Yeah, after we did ginger, bread houses and mine didn't look really good. I went into uh, the kitchen Did you do, yeah. and spent the entire afternoon in there. I was like, okay, now I really well, am into this. It's yeah. hard on live TV. It is. I was like, now I have to fix <laughs> you know. it. It has to be but, right. But yeah. No. Yeah, these are great ideas. I mean, and the, this log, I mean, it's something you might find outdoors. This or... is just a Bradford pear tree <laughs> we cut down at work and I just cut it in pieces. That is so cute. You even painted the ends of it. I painted the end because you're going to have it on a table. It looks kind of fun and cool. Right. So you could do something like that. Great ideas as always. Color, color is in. In fashion and inside. You know, right now we're going through those, we want spring so bad, mm. but we still know cold weather is on its way. Uh, so, but you can say, bring. You better shut your mouth. You better. Don't well, talk about I, that. I, I'm, a, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. <laughs> we don't want to okay? talk about cold weather. Trust me, anybody, I want spring to come fast. I'm sure. Uh, you know. Grow these plants yes, that you're right. selling. But we need to, just just like the clothes can elevate your mood, so can indoor plants that bring a lot of color. Absolutely. Like at my house, I always have a couple pots. I always have something blooming in it. Mm -hmm. Not for anybody else, but for myself, because it really does put a smile to your face. Mm -hmm. So I brought things that are easy to grow, 
That's the number one key, but they bring that's, color. For me, that's important. Yeah. I'm going to start with the Rieger begonias. These are awesome. Look they're at the so colors. They look gorgeous. They, they, they're real, and they're so easy. So They'll bloom inside for like three to four months. Really? Really strong. And all I do is they're six inch. I'll drop them in another pot and just sit them like that. Bright, indirect light. Oh. Keep them moist. I wear mine once a week, and they will bloom like this for months. What? Mm. Okay, I will take all three of these. these yeah, are and so these are gorgeous. great Valentines, by the way. Yeah, that's because true. Because it's something that lasts for months instead of just a week of cut flowers. Uh -huh. So, I so agree. I love the Riga begonias, and then you can add different foliage plants, which have different colors to them, different textures. This pothos is on a pole, so I it adds the height. I love the prayer plant with the glossy, shiny foliage and the purple in it. This looks fake too. I mean, this, it looks fake, so but this. this Perfect. This is all real. And then mm. the calanchos are, are wonderful. You can find these sometimes in the grocery stores, but we carry them all the time. They come in assortment of bright colors, mm -hmm. you know, the oranges and the yellows. Remember, yellow is the number one color, happy color. Mm -hmm. So if you always add yellow, it does make you feel good. This is a such a pretty color okay, here. This is called cyclamen, and cyclamen are great because they can go in a semi-shady area inside. Um, they are a tubular bulb. And you just wore them once a week. The key thing is not to overwater them, and they'll bloom for for weeks inside. And then I brought different bromeliads. We were familiar with the torch one, the torch orange. Mm -hmm. I love this because it's tropical looking. Tropical looking, and again, it blooms for months. And but I then there's be also the these. These are lower, but they're they're not about the flower. They're about the foliage. Tricolor, and these are sister uh, plants to it with really cool color. And then one of my favorite indoor plants is the Rex begonia. Why is that your favorite? Because the foliage. And there's so many different varieties about it. You know, you just get attracted to certain things. Mm -hmm. And so I like to drop them in clay pots and then I'll mix a couple varieties together and they'll bloom, I mean, they'll bloom probably in about a month or two, but it's the foliage that they're known for. I'm about to ask a tough question. We don't have a lot of time for this, but how do you know if your house is a good candidate for nice indoor plants? Because I'm like, I don't know where I would put any of this. Well, it's about light. Okay. So you need not full sun. You just need bright I'm light. I'm sure you can find a place in one of his many main rooms I, to put many, a plant. Many, 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 many. What about artificial <laughs> lights? Is that okay or no? Yeah, artificial light is great. You know, you bathrooms sometimes don't have windows. Uh -huh. So if you have a little lamp that you have plugged in next to the sink, I do that. I'll put a plant next to that so it gets the light. Hello? Hey, Adam. Hello. Hello. Are you there, Adam? Can you hear me? Shh. I'm listening to the ocean. Wow. <laughs> Sounds cool. I'm ready to go back to the ocean. Oh, wait. This, this one has a candle in it. <laughs> you got wax in your ear. That's right. Chris St. Tolson is here with us talking about these shells and how that we, you know, once we go to the, the beach. Yeah. If you're like me, I, I do collect shells. I love to walk along the beach and get those. But I'm, what do you do with them when you get home? I just set them in different places. I just like seeing them in my home. But you do, but I just kept them in a bag. And these are when I was with my grandparents for a life. We used to collect them. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I might not want my whole house to look beachy, but you can do a classy look maybe in one little area of your home. So I'm going to show you some different ideas that you can use your seashells. Um, for example, this is a big one, yeah. and I went ahead and took silk plants, so they're not they're artificial, and I just bent the stems, and I just went ahead, this is that easy, and I just crammed them in that, and that helps soften the shell mm -hmm. so it's not so beachy looking. Right, that's And pretty. put it on a stack of books. Yeah. It really adds a look to it. You can go ahead, if you have potted plants, you can take your seashells and just use them like we would you know the green yeah. sheet moss that adds just a little bit of touch mm. maybe if you get a pot that kind of has the hues and colors of the seashells it's really sweet and nice and then you can take them out if you want to take the plant out or such uh, this is real cute this is my grandmother's candy dish oh, so really? as a kid we used to sneak in there and get the candy and I inherited that <laughs> it's not real crystal but it's the memories behind it right. so what sure. I did is I went ahead and took a house plant and made a gummy plant out of it by taking moss and creating a little sphere of it and then I put it in any type of dish it can also go in a bowl but then I went ahead and put my seashells around it mm -hmm. so we displayed them and some along the base of it and you just fill this bowl up with water the candy dish with water and that's how it absorbs its moisture so you go on vacation you fill it up and go on vacation you don't have to worry about and it and you go great. collect more seashells while yep, you're on vacation it's really easy and then this is really fun if it's a bigger uh, seashell yeah, hopefully you can I make candles like out of them mm -hmm. so you, you get your boat a candle and I took it out of the, the metal yeah. part dropped it in a seashell put it in the microwave until it <laughs> melted and that is it and then you can go ahead and this is one whole voda which lasts about three hours and you can go ahead That's if you great. have a party or something like that you can light them 
and create your own little display that way. Yeah. Let me see that letter. That's I want right. to like this one. Oh, yeah. Right. Under like the sea. Yeah, so it doesn't just have to be those mm. shells. Isn't that cool? That By is the way, cool. if you happen to be in the Bahamas or maybe you're down in Mexico, Cozumel or whatever, be sure that you're not taking a conch shell illegally because okay, they will. That okay? <laughs> That's a great point. They will get you. Well, which is. I didn't know that. Which, is, yeah. which I understand. But here's what I used to go to Florida. You ever go to the seashell factory? No. Well, I don't know where it was. My parents, my grandparents live in Port Charlotte. But oh, okay. there's this huge place called the seashell factory full of seashells <sighs> that you buy so you're not you stripping the beach right. of its beauty. Gotcha. So, well, the yes. ones I find are, this is like a good one, it's usually in Destin. I'm yes. like, wow. Well, because we pick it, but you can go yeah. to Hobby Lobby and buy bags you of can, seashells. Yeah. So, but I still bring yeah, them home. But it's all so the memories. You would put something like this in here? Yeah, what I would do is when you want to create your origami plant, you just take it out of the pot and you just take green sheet moss, which I pre-moistened, mm -hmm. and you just go like this. Oh, take okay, all I your like frustrations, that. wrap <laughs> it, with your fishing, like fishing line, line round and round and round then you take a scissor and cut it and you just lay it in the bowl and you're done and then and you it can creates put your a cool look and again yeah, it creates a really cool look where are you getting this moss are you going out into the forest no no it? we sell it at botanica gardens oh. fresh okay. so you can buy a couple handfuls whatever you want and it is a it's a moss farm so they don't go out and strip oh. the woods they actually grow the moss okay. oh. and harvest it this is really cool. yeah. Look at you. You are doing great. <laughs> All right. And who doesn't want to have the prettiest home on the block? Mm -hmm. Well, this morning, Chris H. Olson shows us how to make our flower beds full and lush. And I'm glad you're here because I'm, I was telling you, I just went and trimmed Jeez. my crepe myrtles. Uh, no, I'm impressed. Some, uh, but I'm like, mm, my flower beds are lacking yes. right now. And I don't know how to fix it. Well, I'm going to bring you some fluff and fillers. Okay. okay? Good. So, and some of these are sun, some of these are shade. And these are all. Easy plants that anyone, including you, I can plant can these. grow, and these are perennial except for one of them, okay. which means they come back every single year. Wow. Some of them are evergreen. So I'm going to start with a few things. Now, if you like, I like aggressive plants. Mm -hmm. So I like plants that fill a flower bed. Right. You know, the fuller a flower bed is, the less maintenance it is. Yeah. Opposite of what people think, because it drowns out your weeds. Okay. So you don't have the weed. This one is called uh, Mexican petunia. It's just about to bloom. It's not like the old-fashioned petunia. It is a perennial. It will get at least twice the size height of this, mm. but will spread. This one plant will probably get 10 foot by 10 foot space. Wow. And it blooms all summer long. The hotter it is, the better it grows. Really? But there is a dwarf variety. It comes in dark purple, a pink, and a white. Okay. So Mexican petunia. Now, one of my favorites are salvias. Mm -hmm. Now, this salvia is called Midnight Blue. That's beautiful. And it is a perennial. And it will get about 30 inches tall okay. and about 30 inches wide. But it blows in the wind like this. So it has mm. texture and movement in the flower bed all summer long and an awesome pollinator. Okay. Bees, hummingbirds. Birds, all will be attracted to your garden, cool. including butterflies. Nice. And it comes back strong every single year. So I use it as a backdrop plant because it gets tall and it adds great movement. That's what I was wondering. Like, how do you layer this out to where it, it looks like you have some depth in your, you know, that well, I guess that's you know, you always hear tall go down smaller yeah. towards the audience. I kind of slightly play by that rule. Okay. I mix and match. I love to pack a flower bed. Okay. And I will just do different heights and mix them too, and it just tends to work. But technically, if you have a pathway, you do want your shorter plants along the pathway. Right. Makes so, sense. And okay. so, speaking of shorter plants, we have lots of different ground covers. This is hot sun. This is sedum, mm. ogon. This is red dragon. These guys are perennials and bloom. If you have a shady area and want a ground cover, especially between like stepping stones, mm -hmm. this is Mazus, which comes with a blue flower that you can see and white as well. Easy to grow and spreads throughout the garden. Doesn't look like Matt much right now, but this is Catmint. And okay. Catmint is awesome. It blooms and looks just like English lavender, but English lavender does not grow well here in the south. It doesn't look like much now, but it's going to be about 12 inches in bloom. Add some tickweed or coreopsis. This one's called golden bronze. Mm. Great color. And this is one of my favorite. This is salvia, which is an annual, meaning it will not come back, but it's called okay. skyscraper for a reason ah. because it will get about four foot tall. And I'm telling you what, it comes in purple, it comes in orange, pink, and red, and it blooms 
all summer long. Nice. Great movement in the garden. And of course, the hanging baskets. I brought this one because this is called Richmond Begonia, and nobody grows it but us. It's, okay. it's exclusively for Botanica Gardens and Plantopia. And I'm going to tell you what, if you like begonias, this guy gets about 24 inches tall, 24 mm. inches wide, and turns dark burgundy wine foliage. This is great. If I came to Plantopia or Botanica Gardens and I said, I need help. Would your staff be able to do that? Yeah, you know what? And bring pictures. Take okay. pictures on your phone. We can look at it okay. and kind of help you out. Lay it out the way you're supposed to plan it if you're a do-it-yourselfer, or we can take care of it for okay, you. Okay, that's helpful. Chris H. Olson been coming here for about 85 years. Thank I you think so 30 much years. 30 years. That's <laughs> unbelievable. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thanks for bringing these beautiful plants.